Susan Koenig and this is Somatics for You. Today we're going to be working with the elbow and the elbow is basically, I'll turn this way, sometimes I'll turn to the side and sometimes I may be facing the front. The elbow is basically a hinge joint and we're going to be working with the elbow um, with both flexion which is bending the bending the elbow this way, that's flexion. And when the elbow straightens, that's extension. And we're going to be working with both the flex, flex, both the movement of flexion and extension with the hand and the forearm in three different positions to capture different muscles of the upper arm in the front, the anterior upper arm, and the posterior upper arm in the back. And I'll tell you what those muscles are as we go along. I find that a tremendous amount of neck and shoulder tension can come from a lot of held tension in this upper arm area. So this upper arm contains the muscles that work the elbow, both in flexion and extension. And also the biceps, one of the three muscles we're going to be targeting, also has an attachment up into the shoulder girdle. Likewise, the triceps at the back of the arm, one of the heads of the triceps attaches into the scapula and therefore also works the extension of the elbow and shoulder just like one of the heads of the biceps works flexion of the elbow and flexion of the shoulder. We're going to be working with the elbow joint to begin with. So it's going to be a sort of simple kind of lesson. But then life isn't lived with one joint. Life is complicated. We're doing all kinds of things with our hands. So really when the elbow, elbow movement is embedded in shoulder girdle movement, movement of the whole trunk and spine, the arms can be in a lot of different positions. The eyes and the head and neck can be in a lot of different positions. I'm talking, I'm vocalizing right now, so my jaw is going and I'm using my hands to be expressive. And I'm sitting, so my sits bones are my main base of support, but so are my feet. And this is my dog, Chester. <laughs> and if I stand, then my base of support is my feet but I need to use my body in various ways and my elbow is part of that full body movement. Uh, we're going to be using the pendicular process and pendiculation is a technique that Thomas Hanna created, devised from his studies of animal, especially of animal physiology and as it applies to the humans, this is a voluntary pendicular technique. It uses the motor cortex of the brain, which is the which controls and organizes voluntary movement. And the thing about pendiculation that is so fabulous is that pendiculation resets the resting level of the muscles it reduces excess tension. That's the resetting, in this case resetting to less tension, the resting level of tonus of the muscles or resting level, that tonus refers to the held tension in muscles. Theoretically, when muscles are not working, like right now I'm not working my elbows, my arms are just hanging, theoretically, because I'm not using the elbow muscles, those muscles are at a very low tonus or very low level of held contraction. Our skeletal muscles always hold some level of contraction because we're ready to move and we're ready to go. But people can have a lot of tension in their skeletal muscles. You'll see people walking around and their elbows are bent like this because they, they can't straighten their elbows because there's so much tension, there's so much held contraction in the uh, anterior and posterior muscles of the upper arm that the elbows no longer can rest long. 
So resting tonus, resting level, what, you want, what we want to do is reduce that held tension so that when the muscles, uh, when the joint that the muscles are working, when the joint is not working, those muscles can relax and can have a long resting length. And there's two parts to pendiculation. The first part is a voluntary contraction. I'm voluntarily contracting upper arm muscles to flex my elbow. And in the second part of pendiculation, I am slowly and with control releasing those muscles that I just used to flex my um, elbow. I am now releasing those same flexor muscles slowly and with control. That two-step process, the contraction, the voluntary contraction, and the slow voluntary controlled release of the same group of muscles used in the contraction and now uh, coming to length and relaxing. That is the pendicular project. It can feel like magic in how it can reduce and lower the resting tonus of muscles. So we're going to be using that pendicular process. When I integrate elbow movement into other movements that use much more of the body, sometimes I'll be using a pendicular process and sometimes I'll be just doing a kind of what I call a slow flow so I can still say, stay aware of the movements that I'm doing but it will be a little bit more of moving through transitions from contraction to release to using the opposite set of muscles. So we're going to get started now and I'm going to start with three, um, three positions for flexion of the elbow. So I'm going to turn in this direction. I'm going to start with my palm facing my thigh. This is very common postural position just letting my arms relax. In this case, as my arms relax, you're seeing my thumb and my index finger. That's a very common physiological position in standing. And so I am going to be working with my left arm. My palm is facing my thigh. I'm going to be focusing on the reference muscle is bra uh, coracle brachia, no, it's brachioradialis, excuse me, brachioradialis is the reference muscle. You're always using more than one muscle. But I like to mention the reference muscle because you can look it up in an anatomy book. You can get an idea of how, where it crosses. In this case, it goes almost all the way down to the um, wrist, and then it crosses the elbow, and it attaches up into the humerus bone. So using the pendicular process, and in this position, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flex my elbow very comfortably. Voluntary uh, flexion of the elbow and a slow, controlled, voluntary release of the flexors. And I'm going to do that again. A voluntary contraction, part one of pendiculation, a slow, controlled release coming to neutral, to relaxation, and just letting my elbow now hang. I'm going to do it a third time, and I'm going to add what we call starts and stops. It keeps refreshing the motor cortex of the brain to keep it alert and to pay attention. So once again, I'm going to flex my elbow. I'm going to start to slowly release and then stop do a small recontraction. Once again, a slow controlled release. I'm going to stop one more time. Once again, do a small voluntary recontraction. And now a slow controlled release all the way to my new neutral and relaxation. So that was the first of three different positions. Now I'm using my left arm. Some people will ask, well, can I do it with both my um, 
both arms at the same time, you certainly can do that. It's a lot more for the brain to pay attention to. If you're having a lot of neck and shoulder tension on one side or the other, I would suggest you just do one arm at a time, but definitely do the other arm. Sometimes if I'm having a lot of tension, let's say it's on my left side in my upper arm area, maybe coming up into my shoulder and neck, I might do the movements with my left arm, then I might do the movements with my right arm, and then I might even repeat the movements with my left arm so that I'm giving more attention to the left arm, to the left elbow. The next position I'm going to do, and I think I will stay in this position, I'm just going to ask my assistant, Isaiah, if, if you can see my hand. Okay, so now my back of my hand is facing forward, and the reference muscle is brachialis. It's underneath the biceps. It's a large muscle. It only crosses the elbow joint. And again, I'm going to flex. I'm going to voluntary, voluntarily flex my elbow and do a slow, controlled release. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to do a voluntary contraction and a slow, controlled release. I'm just doing the movements well within my comfort zone. I am not straining or forcing in any way. A third time. I'm going to do the contraction, and now the slow controlled release with starts and stops, a gentle recontraction, a slow controlled release to a stop, a gentle recontraction, and now this time I'm going to slowly and with control, and with my internal awareness and focus, I'm going to release to relaxation. The third position is palm forward. And is this nice and visible? Good. Isaiah saying yes. Okay, so this is now targeting the biceps muscle. Biceps, two heads. One head is coming into uh, the coracoid process, which is part of the scapula. The other head comes up and into the shoulder joint up in here and the uh, the hand forward the palm forward is now targeting this biceps as a reference muscle so once again part one of pendiculation is a voluntary contraction to, in this case to flexion of the elbow and a slow controlled release if i was having a lot of pain i would really release as slowly as I could, and that resets the resting tonus even better. And again, I'm going to part one of pendiculation is the contraction, the voluntary contraction, and now the slow controlled release. And this third repetition I'm going to do with starts and stops. And as I come down, slow controlled release, I'm going to pause recontract, slow controlled release, pause, recontract, and slowly release all the way and just let my arms hang. So as you can see, I'm just demonstrating right now with my uh, left elbow but I would work with my right elbow as well. I may even work with both elbows at the same time, like I mentioned. And now I'm gonna to go to the triceps, try three heads. I'm gonna to turn to the side. I'm gonna be using the same three hand positions because the triceps, there's a more medial um, uh, part of the triceps. There's a middle part and there's a more lateral part to the triceps, so the three hand positions I use for flexion of the elbow work really well for working with the triceps. And this may seem a little odd, but I was really trying to figure out how I was going to demonstrate this to really work more with the triceps at the elbow. And so this is the position I came up with. I'm actually going to bring my um, 
upper arm, my left arm behind me, and I'm going to bend the elbow and let the elbow, let the forearm and hand dangle. And this is going to be my starting position. And my palm, if it were on my side, would be facing my thigh. And I'm going to extend my elbow, that is straighten my elbow, and then I'm going to slowly let it release, and then let it release all the way down. And again, I'm using the pendicular process. So I am, and because one of the because one of the triceps attaches to the shoulder girdle, it is also working extension of the shoulder. So I'm already using the triceps to bring my upper arm back. And now I'm going to be using all my triceps that actually extend at the elbow. So once again, I'm going to be straightening or extending my elbow a slow controlled release and bring the whole arm back to neutral. Third time, I'm going to start to extend at the shoulder, let my elbow bend, now extend my elbow and I'm going to begin to release my elbow, pause, a recontraction, another slow release, pause, a recontraction, and a slow controlled release and let the arm and elbow and shoulder extend all the way down to my new neutral. And like I said, I would be working with my right arm. I could do both arms at the same time. It depends on my time and my level of pain or tension that I want to be working with. 